So Jesus was a prophet, priest, and king? Yes. The answer is yes. Now, most of us who maybe were raised in the church, we probably have these pictures of Jesus in a long robe with maybe a blue sash and long hair. Well, sorry to say it, Jesus looked nothing like that. One, it was very difficult to keep robes of that color of bright white. Blue sashes really weren't a thing. And back in the day, if you had long hair, it was not really looked well upon for men. Anyways, most of us don't realize it, but we need to maybe, uh, maybe look at Jesus a little differently. Now, throughout church history, we have three main ways that we like to talk about Jesus as prophet and as priest and as king. And as a redeemer, he redeems us in those three ways. It's really quite profound. So we're going to talk through prophet, priest, and king. All right. Now, all three of these terms are ones that actually have their origination or start in the Hebrew scriptures. There are stories of prophets, and there are stories of priests, and there are stories of kings. And then when we go, come to the New Testament, Jesus fulfills those three offices, those three jobs in really profound ways. Okay. Now, what's a prophet? Well, in Hebrew, the word is nevi'im, and that means those who are outside of their mind. <laughs> Prophets are just understood as being crazy people, but deep down, people know they're right. And so Jesus, in some sense, was regarded as a crazy person who was outside of his own mind. But I think deep down, people are like, he's probably right about a few things. Now, prophets had a few jobs. One, they were supposed to be a spokesperson for God, which is a very high calling. But they didn't really talk about the future as much as some people think. You might think the prophecy has to do with predicting the weather. Prophets actually were people that spoke about the priests and the kings of their day and how they lost track, how they got off course, how they lost the plot, how they lost what they were supposed to be about. And so prophets had this really unique job of being people that help course correct. When things got out of hand, they would be the ones that would speak truth to the situation so that things could get back on track. And the Hebrew scriptures are full of prophets, 15 of them actually, who would speak truth to help things get back on track and people wouldn't listen to them and then they would go and become slaves or they would be thrown into exile. Not Things did not go well for people when they did not listen to their prophets. But prophets were, were supposed to be seen as truth tellers. And they were supposed to be the ones that would maybe say the uncomfortable truth that everyone needed to hear. And so when we come to Jesus, we understand Jesus in the same way. That he often was a truth teller that people maybe didn't like. And so some people called him a crazy person. But as a redeemer, God found it really important to show up himself and to tell the truth about certain things. He got tired, in some sense, of untruths or lies. So when we say Jesus is prophet, it's a very deep and profound thing. Now, second, in the Hebrew scriptures, there's priests. And priests exist to remind us that things can be sacred and that things can be desecrated, means treated as though they're not sacred. And so priests come along to, to kind of point out that reality to us and to remind us that, hey, God wants us to treat certain things as sacred. And it became their job from God's sense, from God's point of view, to take things that were made desecrated and to make them sacred again. Now that could be through sacrifices, through prayers, through doing particular rituals that are actually really good to remind us about how things are supposed to be treated as sacred. But priests were so, supposed to also help us relate to God 
because some of us have treated God as not sacred. And so priests come along to also help us treat God as sacred again. And to realize that God always treats us as sacred. And so maybe we should treat everything else around us as sacred. So priests have a very particular job. Now, when we say Jesus is a priest, we see that as very, very close to the heart of Jesus. That Jesus is actually deeply offended when we do not treat people as sacred. When we do not treat God as sacred. When we do not treat ourselves as sacred. And so Jesus steps into history as a priest, as someone who is passionately concerned with helping us treat things and people and God as sacred again. It's a very profound um, role. And unfortunately, in the Hebrew scriptures, there are priests that lose sight of that job. And so they become more interested in how much money is being given to the temple. They become more interested in being understood as uh, profound and as people that they should be the respected ones in the neighborhood rather than saying, hey, we're just here to point out. Treat everything as sacred, guys. So Jesus is not just a prophet. We understand him as a priest. And lastly, in the Hebrew scriptures, we have the kings. Now, kings are just the, um, the political leaders of the day. They were there to establish justice, to say, here's how we need to live in community together. They were the figures that were supposed to represent the people and to establish order. Okay. But some of the kings became harsh and abusive. Some of the kings would use whips that had scorpions tied at the end, and they would whip people with scorpion whips. And just that was just terrible. But Jesus comes along not just as a king, but as a kind king. Because God saw that we were getting really abused by bad political leaders. By people that really weren't interested in justice. That we had a number of kings in the Hebrew scriptures that really weren't concerned with how we treat one another in community. They were, really weren't interested in anything else but making sure that they could gain more land and more conquest and have more gold for themselves. Well, God saw that we had some bad kings, had some bad political leaders, and so God shows up as a king. But he's a humble king. And he's a kind king. And he's a king that's interested in justice and making sure people have what they need to live well. Jesus is a king unlike any other king, but he fits the role of a king. Now, let's wrap this up. Okay. So we understand Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. And as a redeemer, as a reconciler, he loves to take things that are broken and hold them together again, to make them whole, to fix things. So he loves to fix things by being a truth teller. He loves to fix things by reminding us that things are sacred and that we should be, treat each other and ourselves and God as sacred. And, and Jesus is a reconciler because he likes taking communities and economics and, and things that have broken down and fix them so that everybody can thrive again. In all of these ways, Jesus is so much more than just somebody with a white robe, right? But on top of that, um, Jesus not just was that, but he was a traveling rabbi who walked around and would teach these parables and these wild stories. And then he even lived it to the point of death about how we, in our own unique way, are supposed to be little prophets and priests and kings or queens in our lifetime, to be truth tellers ourselves, to remind one another that things are to be treated as sacred. And of course, to be people that are interested in love and in communities that have justice in them as well. So that's it for today. Jesus was a prophet, priest, and king, and in all three of those ways, he was reconciler.
it's profound.